again. Welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Paul Shrimp with Eric Svilgoy again. Yes. Another record four or five weeks in a row. It's great. It, it, it like works. That. And actually, we were spending a little time together this week, too, uh, yeah. here in Cleveland. Yeah, we got we were graced with the presence of the Fertilizer Institute, so we actually had a, had a meeting in Cleveland. Yes. Believe it or not. Yeah, the 4R Summit that they annually hold was here in Cleveland, uh, June 10th and 11th. So that was really... Quite interesting event. Uh, we heard a lot about what's going on with the four R's around the country, and uh, you know a lot about sustainability and more efforts to uh, reach out to the general public and get them to understand uh, farming in general. Yeah, it was good. You know, it's appropriate that it's here in the area with everything that's going on with Lake Erie. It'll be interesting to see what happens after all the rain we've had and all the, you know, just just the, the constant moving of water and. And so forth. It, well, yeah, and it, since you so bring that up, I mean, one thing I did hear this morning on the radio driving in, and that was sort of something we also heard at the 4R Summit, is that uh, with the planting being so behind in places like Ohio and Indiana, uh, looks like maybe 20% or so of the corn crop may not get into the ground. And the uh, with the added rain we've had, there's about 60% more water going into the waterways around this area than is normal. So folks are uh, speculating and fearing that, uh, you know, algae bloom problems this summer may be more severe than we've seen over the last couple of years. Or with the protect plant, we might see just less fertilizer put down on, on the corn side, at least from a nitrogen standpoint. If, you know, True. It's, there's a lot of factors to watch. I know everyone will be watching it very closely, and it, I'm sure that's kind of an undercurrent to what people are thinking here in Ohio. Yeah, and I remember the one quote from the meeting was interesting. It said a lot of those fields that don't get planted may be filled with weeds, but uh, as the speaker said, you know, weeds may be great in the field for in terms of growing, but uh, if you really want to get the nitrogen out of the soil effectively with a plant, you need corn. So Right, absolutely. Yeah, So and Paul, I do have some good news to report uh, really? when, when you're talking about the planting front. Uh, as I've been reporting the last few weeks, our friends in uh, Iowa have been trying to make progress, trying to get some dry days to get crop into the ground. And apparently they now had a nice string of about five days or so that have been dry. And according to the latest reports from Iowa, 93% of the corn is in as uh, we've passed June 10th. And 70% of the soybean has made it into the ground. So, Paul, sounds like the uh, Iowa, state of Iowa is going to be... Uh, basically okay when it comes to getting crop into the ground here in 2019. Yeah, Iowa seems to always find a way. Somehow, yeah. some some way it does. They are very good about that. Yes, well, you know, it's, you know, land and weather, it's just, it's the perfect place in the world. It's the garden center of the universe for <laughs> corn, I think. And now that we've pumped up <laughs> Iowa nicely, I also need to give a shout out to my friends in California. I know last week we, uh, Paul and I were talking about the proposed uh, tariffs that uh, the Trump administration was threatening to put on uh, Mexico for not cooperating with the immigration problem, but I guess there's now an agreement in place uh, over the next 90 days or so. I guess Mexico and the U.S. are going to work together on this, so the tariffs won't be going into place. But I had mentioned that uh, avocados might be scarce because a lot of them come from Mexico, but I had a couple of my growing friends in California remind me that they have plenty of avocados that come from California and that they should be able to uh, supply the U.S. in case any Mexican tariffs do go into place. So shout out to my friends that grow avocados out in California. I think hidden in that statement was, please shut up. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> we have avocados, sir. Please shut up and stop talking about it. Okay. Well, what do you have, Paul, now that you've tossed the grenade in wanting, my lap? Thank you. wanting people to shut up and giving me my own segue. <laughs> so, you know, so the I, I saw CNN had some reports on the, uh, and I love I love the wording. It was it was something along the lines of you know, your breakfast cereal is still contaminated with weed killer. So it's weed killer and contaminated are our two favorite words. Yes. But, uh, you know, it was based on reports from our friends at the Environmental Working Group who tend to put extremely low tolerances on the amounts of yes. product in order to... Multi-part uh, per billion yes. percentages. Yes. Very, very teeny, which means you have to eat thousands of bowls of cereal every day to get, you know, the, the dosage required to somehow harm you, possibly. Yeah. Even, even then, it's only a possibility. 
So, um, you know, those are floating around again. I mean, of course, they're famous for the Dirty Dozen for, for specialty crops as mm -hmm. well. Um, and just more publicity rolling out there. So we'll probably have to endure this. I think the, the, the question is whether you, you have, um, uh, you know, because, of course, they go after breakfast cereal, so they go after children, the whole notion of, you know, you know children have, protect, are more sensitive and children you know, and all mm -hmm. that. So um, it, Cheerios and General Mills did go to the extent of labeling, you know, non labeling the, the oats non-GMO, even though there are no GMO There's, oats. Exactly. Uh, great, um, which, you know, you can understand to some degree protecting the brand, um, but, you know, it is what it is. You just wonder at some point, are, are they going to, are, are the General Mills of the world, as they get pressured, going to turn around and look at, you know, look at trying to find ways to label life to state free. It's a little scary, but <sighs> it's possible. I suppose. I, I mean, it's know. just, unfortunately, Paul, I mean, the era we're in right now, um, glyphosate has become the new boogeyman in, you know, the general public's mind. I mean, this is kind of replaced uh, asbestos as sort of like something that the lawyers are trying to go after, uh, you know, with... I know several of the trips I've taken, I've seen the, uh, you know, have you used Roundup in uh, commercials uh, on the television where they're actually saying can get part of the class action lawsuit. So uh, it's just unfortunate, Paul, but unfortunately, and also unfortunately, I don't see this changing anytime soon, at least not until we get some good positive news either in the courtroom or uh, with the general public on the glyphosate front. Yeah, I will say the one thing about CNN, of course, it came pretty late in the story, but they did allude to some of the um, some of the relationships that the environmental working group has uh, among uh, among our friends in the uh, in the organic universe. So, mm. uh, you know, uh, everybody's got, you know, I mean, a little bit of a little bit of something behind them. And certainly the environmental groups are uh, for for what we see as their flaws in terms of really wanting to eliminate pesticides entirely and using whatever means they can to get at at, at that, there are, there are also ulterior motives behind them as well. So, it's good to see that the popular press is at least picking up and exploring the fact that you know these aren't necessarily pure lily white in, uh, <laughs> intentions when these things go out. Well, that's that is good. That <clears throat> nice to know some fellow members of the press actually can be. Uh, a little more objective when it comes to these things. Yes, please. So is that it? Are we done? I think so. Is that a wrap? That okay. is a wrap. Well, that's it for this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. And thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter, or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We'll try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.